What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 tool tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use the shell tool to remove material from the inside objects. This can be really useful for helping create hollow objects from your solids inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you remember, pretty much everything we've done up to this point has been really working with the solid tools. And so the solid tools are tools that are used on objects that are considered solids inside of Fusion 360. And so you can check solids by going to the inspect menu and clicking on section analysis and then placing something like this. And what you're going to notice right now is all of these objects are solids in the sense that they're completely enclosed meaning they have no holes in them, which is why they show up shaded like this. This means if we were to try to export this to a 3D modeling program or something, or if we were to try to export this to a 3D printer or something like that, um, these would all work because they're solids. But sometimes what you want to do is you want to create objects that are more hollow. So you don't necessarily want this to be completely filled like this for whatever reason, whether that is you don't want to waste a whole bunch of material when you're 3D printing or if you want to make something lighter. Sometimes you want things to be hollow, but you still want them to be solids. And so there's a tool built into Fusion 360 that allows you to do this called the Shell Tool. The Shell Tool can be found inside of the Solid Toolbar um, under Modify. If you look at the drop down, there's an option for shell here, or for me, it shows up by default in this list as well. And so you'll notice when you mouse over this, it gives you a little description, but basically what this does is this removes material from the interior of an object um, to make it a hollow cavity with walls, meaning you can basically have this create walls um, with a thickness based on these objects. And so the way that it works is fairly simple. Um, what you do is you activate the shell tool and then you need to select faces or bodies. So in this situation, let's start with a really simple example. Let's say we wanted to take this cylinder and we wanted to remove the top in order to make this a solid. So if I was to, for example, say I wanted this to be 0.1 inches thick and I was to click OK, after I select that top face, basically what that did is that removed all of the material from the central point of this. And so if we were to look at our section analysis of this object, you can see how now, where before, this was a solid, kind of like this. Now it has walls, but no material right here. And so we can use this um, in order to create lots of different kinds of shapes. So for example, we can do the same thing with the shell tool, but this time instead of selecting one end, if I was to rotate down and select the other end, and then move this inside, you'll notice that this makes a completely hollow shape. So if we were to look at this one from a section analysis standpoint, you can see how that creates a completely solid shape and it removes the ends. So all you have now is your walls. And so this can be really helpful for creating a lot of different kinds of shapes, especially more complex shapes like this one. So what I've done is I've just basically revolved a profile in order to create kind of a vase shape. Well, if we were to select that, using the shell tool. And I find that this works best on objects that have ends, like simple ends that you can select. So you don't want to select the sides because if you do this, you can see how you're going to get some kind of weird results. It's not really very helpful. What you want to do instead is you want to select your end and then you can adjust the thickness of that object. And so if we were to go ahead and we were to call this good and we were to inspect this one, You can see how this now has walls in here as well. So this is a really simple way to do this. And so notice when you use this tool, it can also thicken things either inside, outside, or both. So you don't just have to remove material to the inside. If you have an object that you want to thicken, you can also create material to the outside as well. And one thing I want to point out is just, um, you need to be careful how things are constructed because you'll get different results with this depending on how you do this. So for example, um, I have two shapes here that are pretty similar, but I built them differently. So this first object, I built this using the extrude tool and the join function. And so what that's done is that's taken this and made it a part of this. So it joined these two together in a single solid, where this other object 
you can see how I created these as two different bodies. So body five and body six, or one is the thickened edge around the outside, the other is the central point. Well, if I was to come in here and use the shell tool in order to shell each one of these out. So let's say I was to shell both of them. We'll call it point one again. And we'll shell the other one as well. And then we were to do a section analysis of these. What you're gonna notice is with the one object, you can see how this hole gets bigger at this jump point between the two um, objects. So if you look at this one, for example, because I modeled these as separate bodies, when I shelled this out, it only shelled the interior body, and this has a uniform thickness all the way across. This other one, because I joined this larger body, the smaller body, it's not uniform. You can see how right here it jumps and it gets bigger because this piece right here um, was a part of the join function, and now the interior of this gets larger. So you just need to be aware of the way that you're uh, constructing things when you use this tool in order to get the results that you want. And so like I said before, generally I find this tool works the best when you have objects that have ends like this one. So for example, I can select this end right here and I can give this a little bit of thickness and it'll shell out this whole space. And depending on how you wanted this to come together, you might wanna be a little bit careful with how you construct this. So if you wanted this base to be solid, for example, you might consider constructing that base as a separate body. That way when you use the shell tool on this top piece, this would stay solid instead of having this little weird gap in here. And so on the other hand, if we were to use the shell tool on this one, we'd do the same thing where we just select the two ends and we just move this in. You can see how this will remove material from this whole thing and it'll create an object with a recessed base right here as well as a hole going all the way through it. So leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you used this tool? Have you had any success with it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.